Hello, my name is Lenny Hooley Gilbert, and I will be performing a monologue from Titus Andronicus, Act 5, Scene 1, playing the part of Aaron. In this monologue, Aaron has just been captured and is about to be hanged for treason. So, before he believes himself to be killed, he proceeds to confess to everyone in the room all the evil things he has done throughout his life and those evil things he has not been able to do, but wishes that he has. Even now, I curse the day. And yet, I think few come within the compass of my curse, wherein I did not some notorious ill as kill a man or else devise his death. Ravish a maid or plot the way to do it. Accuse some innocent and forswear myself. Set deadly enmity between two friends. Make poor men's cattle break their necks. Set fire on barns and haystacks in the night and bid the owners quench them with their tears. Oft have I digged up dead men from their graves and set them upright at their dear friends' doors, even when their sorrows almost was forgot. And on their skins, as on the bark of trees, have with my knife carved in Roman letters, let not your sorrow die, though I am dead. <laughs> but. I have done a thousand dreadful things as willingly as one would kill a fly, and nothing grieves me heartily indeed. But that I cannot do ten thousand more. Thank you. Hello, my name is Emily Richardson. I am in 11th grade and I will be performing Act 3, Scene 3 of The Tempest. In this scene, my character Ariel is getting attacked by newcomers to the island and she is advising them against attacking her. <laughs> you fools! I and my fellows are the ministers of fate the elements of whom your swords are tempered, may as well wound the loud winds, or with be mocked at stabs, kill the still closing waters, as diminished one style for that's in my plume, that you three from Milan did supplement good Prospero, exposed into the sea which hath requited him and his innocent child, for which the foul deeds delaying not forgetting, heaven sees the seas and shores, and ye all the creatures against your peace. <laughs> the of thy son, Alonzo, they have perfect, and do pronounce by me a lingering perdition worse than any death can be at once. All else falls upon your heads and is nothing but heart sorrow and a clear life ensuing. Thank you. Oh, were that all, I think not on my father. And these great tears grace his remembrance more than those I shed for him. What was he like? I have forgot him. My imagination carries no favor in but Bertram's. I am undone. There's no living, none, if Bertram be away. For all one, that I should love a bright particular star and think to wed it, he is so above me in his bright radiance and collateral light. Must I be comforted? 
not in his fear. The ambition in my love this plagues itself, the hind that would be mated by the lion, must die for love. Twas pretty, though a plague, to see him every hour, to sit and draw his arched brows, his hawking eye, his curls, in our heart's table, heart too capable of every line and trick of his sweet favor. But now he's gone, and my idolatrous fancy must sanctify his relics. Who comes here? But I do think it is their husband's fault when wives do fall. Say they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps, or break out in peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us, or say they strike us, or scant our former in having despite. Why, we have galls, and though we have some grace, yet we have some revenge. Let husbands know their wives have sense like them. They see and smell, and have their palates both for sweet and sour, as husbands have. What is it they do when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Thus frailty that thus errs? I think so too. And have we not affections, desire for sport, and frailty as men have? Then let them use us well. Else let them know the ills we do, their ills instruct us so. Hello, my name is Ellen Hughes. My first piece is John Donne's Holy Sonnet. Death, be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me from rest and sleep, which but thy pictures be. Much pleasure then from thee much more must flow, and soonest with thee our best men do go, rest of their bones and souls delivery. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings, and desperate men, and dost with poison, war and sickness dwell, and poppy or charms can make us sleep as well, and better than thy stroke. Why swellst thou then? One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. Thank you. Hello, my name is Katherine Middleton, and the first poem I will be performing for you today is All This and More by Mary Carr. The Devil's Tour of Hell did not include a factory line where molten lead spilled into mouths held wide, no electric drills spiraling screws into hands and feet, nor giant pliers to lower you into simmering vats. Instead, a circle of light opened on your stuffed armchair whose chintz orchids did not boil or change. And the devil adjusted your new spiked antennae almost delicately with claws curled and lacquered black, where he spread his leather wings to leap into the acid green sky. And your head became a TV hole, a gargoyle mirror. Your Doppelganger, sloppy at the mouth and swollen at the joints, reenacted your days in sinuous, slow motion, your lines delivered, with a mocking sneer. Sometimes the frame froze, reversed, began again, the red eyes of a friend. You cursed, your girl-child cowered behind the drapes, parents alive again, puzzled by this new form. And that's why you clawed your way back to this life. My second poem is Ezra Pound's Envoy. Go, dumb-born book, 
Tell her that sang me once that song of laws. Hast thou but song as thou hast subjects known, then were there cause in thee that should condone even my faults that heavy upon me lie and build her glories their longevity. Tell her that shed such treasure in the air, recking not else but that her graces give life to the moment I would bid them live as roses might in magic amber laid red overwrought with orange and all made one substance one color braving time tell her that goes with song upon her lips but sings not out the song nor <laughs> knows the maker of it some other mouth may be as fair as hers might in new ages gain her worshippers when our two dusts shall be laid siftings on siftings in oblivion till change hath broken down all things save beauty alone. Thank you. The second poem I will be performing is Bug's Song by Rodney Koenigke. The Bug Song. Don't get crushed. Afterlives feel meaningless. But spring will come, push out the nubs, Kids braid into pallets and take up your pallet from lawns noons hardly touched. The small think gods just lull on clouds. Bugs think gods just crush. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron, bubble. 